Good morning, my fellow RV enthusiasts. The doorbell just rang, so I believe that a package that I've been waiting for has arrived. Nature's Head composting toilet has arrived. And this bad boy needs to get installed. What better place to install this bad boy than out here at the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with a composting toilet like this Nature's Head composting toilet, it actually helps you eliminate your black tank. There's gonna be no longer a need for your black tank in your RV because all of your waste is gonna be composted and disposed of through the, through the unit. What that does allow you to do is it kind of doubles your capacity for your gray water, and not quite double, it's gonna depend on how your, how your tanks are set up, how they're leveled, how the valves are and stuff like that, but it allows you to increase the capacity of your gray tanks depending again on your, on your RV. Now this particular unit here has a separate area for the urine and then the separate tank for your other waste, for your, for your number twos. It really is easy to operate a couple of latches on each side and the top comes right off. And this is actually the tank here where your number two waste goes. And then you have the urine bottle on the front where your urine goes. So you just have to empty your urine and your number two waste separately. And that helps eliminate smells and odors and all that kind of stuff. And you use a coconut core in here. And I'll do another video on that on another day. But for now, we're just going to focus on the installation of this unit in the, in the RV. And from my understanding of it, we haven't installed this yet. But from my understanding of it is there's virtually no, no odor at all unless you're doing something extremely wrong. Uh, there's a coconut core that we're going to be using in this. So the coconut core itself is, uh, you know, gives kind of an earthy smell to it. So let's get started and install this bad boy. Okay gang, so we're gonna get right on installing this. Now, as you can see, I'm in the RV bathroom right now and I'm, I'm actually gonna be cheating a little bit. I started this video off by saying that we were going to install this at Lake Mead National Recreation Area when we were out there, but I rewatched one of Jason Wynn's videos on how he installed the composting toilet and how not to install a composting toilet. So I decided with all the trips to the hardware store that we might need, I'm probably best off installing it somewhere where I have access to a hardware store. So we're actually in a Lowe's, actually we're in a Home Depot parking lot right now. And I'm gonna do it here because I can, I have everything I need right here. I'll be able to do it all at once, not have to worry about trips back and forth and hopefully bang this thing out all in one quick deal. Okay gang, so I've opened up a little bit of a cheater hole for me. The bottom of this cabinet comes out, so I'm a lot, I can see inside of there and I can see some of the electrical and I can see some of the, the plumbing and things that are going on. So installing the composting toilet and needing that exhaust to go somewhere, I'm going to go into this cabinet down underneath, leave Lori her space under the cabinet because I know that's gonna be very important to her, right? <laughs> and be able to vent this, I think, fairly easily. But if I learned anything from Jason Wynn's video, it didn't turn out to be as easy as we thought, but we're gonna give it a shot. So I, I've got my list in my head, which I know is scary. It's never good. <laughs> never good. We're gonna forget something. But we're in the parking lot here of Home Depot. So you can see Home Depot. We don't have far to go if I miss anything. It looks like it's gonna be really easy. <laughs> Stick around, this could be good. PVC. I really need a PVC cutter, but then it's only used for one purpose. So I think I'm going to get this mini hacksaw because I can use this for a whole lot more things. When I'm in the tool department, it's really hard to buy only what I need. This is a dangerous place for Polly. Pretty 
confident that I got everything I needed at Home Depot for this composting toilet installation. Only time will tell. The one thing I didn't buy was a piece of wood to go down underneath the toilet to cover up the old hole and to give us something to, something solid to mount the new toilet on because I want to see exactly the measurements I'm going to need once I get the old toilet off. Now one of the first things I'm going to do again is remeasure this using this side window here as a point of reference so that I don't come up in the middle of the floor in the bathroom or drill into something I'm not supposed to. So by measuring stuff inside the coach and outside the coach, I'm gonna make sure that everything is good. So the first thing I'm gonna measure is from the edge of this wall here into where my cabinet is inside of the bathroom. Then I'll measure from this wall over to the window. That'll give me my point of reference for the window outside. So 26 inches there, and then another four inches to the window gives me my marker. Now I'm gonna measure over from the window, which approximately comes down here. I'm gonna measure over my 32 inches, then I know where I can drill approximately, and I'll go back the 12 inches that I want inside as well. So the, 30, the 32 actually lines up right with this, perfect. So it'll give me a great point of reference. Okay, I'm gonna need about three feet of PVC to use as a vent. Now, I actually, I'm only gonna use about two and a half feet, but I'm gonna cut it three feet at first to make sure that I've got enough to go up inside the, the RV, get the length that I need before cutting everything off. Remember, you know, cut once, if at all possible, or always have enough so that you only have to cut one more time. If I cut two feet and I need two and a half, puts me in a bad situation. and they put the blade in upside down so you don't hurt yourself. So you gotta flip the blade around. It's been one of those days, folks. Okay, trip number two to the Home Depot store. Wrong size hole saw, and I'm actually going to exchange the PVC as well and get something that's not quite as thick. Off we go to trip number two. We're parked just off behind Home Depot here, so. Not a long trip, but <laughs> could be one of those days, folks. Lori's installing the pipe. Now you need the end that's flat. I think that's the wrong end, so spin it around. Yeah, there you go. I don't know what I'm doing. You're laying pipe, baby. <laughs> and give it a couple of turns, maybe straight up. Maybe it's already up through and it's touching on the top. So let me check on the inside while you're doing that. So this is trip Number three. three. three actually three and a half you, you forgot i i actually left the store and forgot a piece of pvc tube laying up against the wall which i had to go back for and then while i was there i grabbed a bucket so that we could mix up the cocoa core for the toilet so technically three and a half but not going so bad and it the install is going better than i actually expected i think our coach has just kind of just got that right setup for it so We've got the PVC vent coming up through the floor into the bathroom. It came up through the floor right into the underside of the cabinet. So far, so good. Side portion for venting is done. I'm gonna go inside, hook up the electrical, and get the rest of this bad boy finished. Okay, before I close this up, I want you to see I brought the vent hose up here. We're actually in the bottom of our 
kitchen cabinet. Now, I faced it towards the bathtub because there's more room over here for the hose. The hose is actually going to loop out this way. It's gonna come up through this board here over in the corner behind this and straight out through here to the toilet. And that's what we're gonna do next. Again, you can see the vent hose going through into the cabinet here. I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see under here, but you can see back in here that I didn't take up too much of Lorena's cabinet space because she would have been upset with me. So, And then the electrical will probably come up through there as well. Next part is what I assume is going to be the really crappy part of the job, literally, and that is getting rid of the old toilet. So out she comes. Okay, this is where it could get nasty. Turn off the water, make sure there's no water in here. Wow, not bad at all. It's not as nasty under there as I expected. Old toilet removed. You can see we've got a big opening in the floor. Gonna take a plug and we're gonna install the plug in there and then we'll cover this up with a piece of wood, mount the composting toilet on top of here. We're good to go. I did forget to get a plug for that. We gotta plug this off as well because as soon as you turn on the water, that thing will spew water. So we don't wanna do that. Almost done. Okay, gang, so this is the electrical plug that goes into the side of the composting toilet. So I'm gonna grab electrical out of here, up in behind this panel. Now we have a 12 volt receptacle up there, so I know we have 12 volt power. So I went in and I tapped in to the 12 volt receptacle. Hopefully you guys can see that because I can't see what I'm aiming at right there. Somewhere around in here is the 12 volt receptacle. You can see where I tapped in and I ran the wires away into the bathroom through this opening where there was already electrical running up there. So you can see where there's two pipes running down and I ran the black and the red up through where those two pipes were. Let me see if hopefully I can get a, into a spot where you can see that. Where the black and the red are running up through the two tubes, those run right up in underneath the bathroom sink. So that should give me 12 volt up there. All I need to do is tap that blue and red wire onto this where it's got positive. Obviously the other one is negative and we'll be good to go. We'll have power. At least that's the theory. See where I've got the, the black and the red wire coming up underneath the bottom of the coach, up into the cabinet. Now I can just bring this wire down through this hole on the side here and we'll have power. I'm gonna grab the red and black wires right here, cut them right here. I could cut them back underneath the cabinet, but I don't wanna crawl under there. There'll be a little bit of extra wiring down underneath, but not a big deal. Red is positive. Black is negative. These are actually live ends right now. It's only 12 volts, so I'm not gonna hurt you. Don't play with live electricity. <laughs> and this is positive, so positive is gonna go on the red. We should be good to go. I will wrap these in electrical tape to make sure that they don't come apart under there when they're jiggling around. Not likely they will. And I will also tell you guys, I, I did test power already. Like I know that there's, I checked those lines earlier to make sure there's power, but just again, take that down the center into the positive. And you can see the light lighting up. So I know I have pop power there. I have 12 volt. So it's not like I didn't check that. Always check your power. Don't just run lines and connect them and not know that you have power. So that's it for the power side of this. Now I've got to get to making the plate to go on here to set the toilet in. And then we'll be good to go. Now I am bummed that this is so far away from the wall. Because I would have liked to have gotten the, the composting toilet back a little further. But it's going to be back enough that I'll be fine. So we'll make it work. I don't want to remove this because I want the next people to be able to, to reinstall another toilet if they, if they absolutely have to. I could tear all of this out and drop this down underneath and all that, but that is not going to happen. Some of you guys might be thinking, this guy's a magician. He changed clothes in the middle of the install. Didn't happen. I actually saw how much of a struggle Jason Wynn went through with this next part, putting a piece of wood down here. Now they used an entire 
plate, square plate to fit here, and that's cool. It would work great. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this round piece here, and I'm going to cut it the shape of the bottom of our composting toilet. Then once I have the shape of that, and I know where I want to position it, then I will cut this out of the bottom of, of this. So composting toilet shape on here, then cut this out of the bottom, and it should be a perfect fit. I expect it to hang over the front just a little bit, but it's not going to be enough that's going to annoy me or anything. And I might even notch this out a little bit more so I can slide that back. Although that won't make much sense because it's still going to have the toilet anyway. We'll figure it out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out the bottom of this composting toilet onto the wood, and then we'll worry about cutting out the hole after. And it would probably be easier cutting the hole first and having a bigger piece, but I'm never one for doing things the easy way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this onto here, and then I'm going to cut just outside of that, maybe an inch or so, just to give ourselves some wiggle room and allow me to do some fine tuning on that, maybe clean it up a little bit as well. Okay, now I looked everywhere. I know I have two jigsaws, can't find them. So I'm gonna be using this Roto Zip saw. I've only used this once or twice before. This could be a disaster. Uh, wear safety glasses when you use this thing because it throws stuff everywhere. If you see me bleeding, call 911. Well, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Okay, now that wasn't totally pretty, but I can work this with a sander and be just fine. Good, now to cut out the hole. If I remember correctly, drilling a hole is where this thing rocks. Center point, drop it in, buzz it around, should be good, right? I'm not gonna cut a hole first, this thing's supposed to drop a hole right in there as well, so let's check it out. smooth this hole if I thought but I think it'll work okay gang so this is how the last part of this install is gonna go down I don't want this to be permanent on the floor here I don't want it to be permanent because who knows if the next person wants the composting toilet and I know I want to take our composting toilet probably into the next coach it's a thousand dollar piece so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attach this weather strip to the bottom of the board put the board back down here screw the board down just with four screws two in the front two in the back and then when it's time to remove that, I just remove the four screws, the board will come right off. There'll be no trace left of the install except for four small holes, which a new toilet will probably cover anyway, so it won't make that much difference. Okay, and there's the way it looks with the brackets installed and all that stuff. We're just gonna set the toilet right on top of it. Once you're in the brackets there, put the little screws in the side. We just plugged in our power. We plugged in our vent hose. We've got exhaust coming out. Now I can hear it. This is your intake over here and you are really good to go. Now I really hope that'll help you guys when you go to install your composting toilet. I'm gonna have a link where you can buy your own composting toilet below on Amazon. You can buy it through Amazon or Nature's Head. It's gonna be the same price either way. And I will also put a list of items that you're gonna need to do this because there's just certain things that, that you just don't even think of needing. Mine was the, the plug to plug off the water so that when you turn on your water pump, it doesn't just blow water out the back because your other toilet actually uses the water from the water pump. So there's a lot of things that I didn't think that I would need. A switch to turn the vent fan off and on. Now, Jason Wynn did mention that in his video. I completely spaced and forgot all about it. And if you guys were paying attention, you'll notice that I didn't install either the switch or the 12 volt fuse. You really should have the 12 volt fuse on it here just in case something happens down on the far end so you don't have any issues. You should always put a fuse on there. So maybe you guys will be out getting your own very, very soon. Stay up to date on all the videos we have by subscribing to our channel. Post any questions, comments, or, or concerns below in the video, or you can come on over to Facebook to the Motorhome Experiment and we can maybe start a conversation over there about toilets as well. Thanks for watching, gang. We'll talk to you again soon. We'll see you in another video very, very soon. Have a great day. And we'll probably wind up painting that board, staining it or something to make it look a little bit better on the bottom, but it really doesn't bother me. But.
needs to be painted.